Hey everyone, uh, back here for some more modern action. Uh, so, uh, for this list, uh, for this league, I've just made uh, a couple of slight changes to the sideboard. The main deck's all the same. Um, so I've just brought in two Tall Mods Crypt, um, and I hadn't really thought about it until I saw it in someone else's list, but Tall Mods Crypt like, uh, with Lurus is really good because it gets rid of your opponent's graveyard, but yours stays and you can interact with it and cast spells with it and all of that. Um, so that's why I've done that, and I've took out, uh, taken out one Force of Vigor and one Leyline of Sanctity. I'm not seeing that much discard stuff. Um, we're a little stronger against it thanks to uh, Lurus, and also I'm not seeing that much Eldrazi Tron either. So that was uh, my thinking, and that's why I've done what I've done. So we'll get in, we'll look for a match, and we'll see how the list does. Okay. Ah, uh, well, this is good. It looks like we have won the Daryl. Um, so we're going to go ahead and choose to play first. We'll get our companion happening. And we'll see what's going on. Opponent's a 60 card deck. They've also got a Lurus. Uh, this hand is probably good enough. It's not the most amazing thing in the world land wise um but hey we got our daybreak we got a rancor to enable it we've got some removal for opponents um stuff with whatever they're doing so yeah sacred foundry is this burn blister coil weird okay all right well if we draw a second land for daybreak coronet we should surely win Alright, there comes the Lava Spike. Uh, they're attacking for two. We're not going to block. And they've played a second Blister Coil win. Alright, well, we sort of fail a little bit there. Our life total is not too low, though. I think we've got a little bit of time. This isn't as scary as, like, the Runaway Steamkin decks that we've been seeing. Unless they play that plus land and go off. But, hey, we'll see. We will see. It's just a matter of morphos. That's not too bad. Looks like they've uh, taken a little bit of inspiration from the mono red prowess. They could even just be like a red white prowess um, with Lurus, splashing for Lurus. That would make some sense. Alright, they've got the lava dart, so I would say that they are a little more towards the prowess uh, decks. Attacking for 8, that's a bit menacing, uh, of course we can't block yet. Look to draw that land, just win with Daybreak Coronet, hopefully. Alright, so we got a 2. Uh, it needs to be a Razor Verge Thicker or a Plains. Oh, they got another one, they just kill us? Okay. I should have paid better attention, but if we lose our Boggle there, or our Scout, we're not winning anyway. Um, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, so we're going to take out these Core Spirit Dances, we're going to take out these Suppression Fields. Path is good, I think Tormod's Crypt will be good too, and Leyline of Sanctity is good. Um, so that looks like a pretty decent board to me. Uh, Lurus seems just a little bit too expensive, he's like a 3 mana Core Spirit Dancer almost, like he's got the lifelink but it's not that great. Uh, we also need to worry about Blood Moons, so Force of Vigor needs to come in, and we'll just take out a Grisburn or two. Uh, we'll take out a Grisburn and a Dried Arbor. That'll do us. <clears throat> no, maybe the, um... Maybe the Graft Digger's Cage is a little bit better than my uh, Tormod's Crypts there, but we'll see. I can always adjust it for game three if we get there. Mm -mm. 
Alright, so we have got a no creature hand here, so we need to get rid of this. Uh, this has got Leyline. I think we took out Dried Arbor, and this doesn't have Lifelink, so this is really bad too. Alright, we can keep this one, and uh, we'll just bottom the Force and the uh, Forest. Forest, a pretty dead card in this hand anyway. Uh, it sucks that we're going to take damage from our Horizon Canopy, but so be it. <clears throat> Oh, there's our friend Misha's Bubble. Um, I've got a wonderful idea. Instead of banning Lurus, can we just ban Misha's Bubble? And it gets rid of a lot of the uh, decks that are just abusing that uh, combination there. Well, that's an awful draw. Um, let's just jam Ethereal Armor and attack two. I guess. Seems really bad. Uh, I don't think we're getting there. Brick on land and draw an extra creature. Not really what we want to see. Oh, now that could get us there. <laughs> uh, if we survive till our next turn, we can just gain a bunch of life. We'll be attacking for 10 at that point. But, you know, we do need to survive until then. It's mono red prowess. We can just die super easy. There's the Lava Spike. Um, hopefully no Lava Dart. Lava Dart will get his creature out of blocking range. Oh, come on, man. Fucking Jesus. Alright. Uh, well, get me out of here. This is a waste of time. Um, <laughs> absolutely destroyed by Mono Red Prowess. Uh, by a couple of hands that uh, land screwed me a little bit there. But, you know, those games happen. Those games happen. Okay, so we're back here for round two. This hand doesn't have a creature. Um, but it does have access to Dried Arbor. Which could be good. Um, Alright, so I don't think we want to keep this, although if it's like a Ponza deck, it could be pretty good. Alright, let's... I don't know, let's keep this. I don't think it's too bad. It's not, uh, by any stretches, amazing. Yes! So my opponent uh, asked if we saw the price of Misha's Bobble recently, uh, and I just uh, said I had, and that it's crazy, and Vendels are holding people ransom, uh, because that's literally all that's happening with that. Um. Alright, so we do get our Dried Arbor. Uh, if we use this Windswept Teeth now, uh, we don't lose a land to our suppression field, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to get both of his artifacts, so that's really nice. Um, and we'll hope to get some aggressiveness happening next turn. <laughs> uh. Thought not so, yikes. Yeah, no. Nah. 
<laughs> All right, so we can double suit up this dried arbor here. Uh, Path to Exile is a good one. Um, I think just save that for maybe a reality smasher, maybe next turn. Uh, if we. Maybe next turn, if we. Uh, Remove the thought knots here. We can draw into an aura as well. Just yeah. Just chill for a bit here. Just chill for a bit. <clears throat> Not where we want to be against Eldrazi Tron, but maybe, maybe. He doesn't have access to Tron yet. Uh, there's a matter reshaper. <clears throat> All right, Spider Umber is good, good in the sense that it will let us start attacking. Uh, so let's go ahead and play that and start the beatdown. He's going to draw a card off the Matter Reshaper, but that's fine. We'll just let that happen. There's no need to path Matter Reshaper because might just draw him a land anyway. Uh, matter Reshaper reveals Matter Reshaper. Seems balanced. The reality smasher. Oh, he's just paying a lot to sacrifice the expedition map. Fair enough. He will have access to Tron Mana now, though. Uh, let's get rid of this Thought Knots here now. Uh, 12 is low enough for us. Hopefully we draw a Daybreak Coronet. More land. Just what the Doctor ordered. Alright. So we drew a Daybreak Coronet for turn. Which is nice. Uh, now we got a big fatty and we just need to dodge something like Khan the Great Creator or... Uh, into Chalice, uh, into Ensnaring Bridge, or an uh, All This Dust. You got the Reality Smasher off of that one, um, but Reality Smasher is going to be a little bit slow here if that's all he's got. I hope his hand's just plotted with creatures. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, well, there's the Blast Zone, so we just lose. <laughs> I guess we can lure us and start getting stuff back, but yeah, that's uh, that's a super big beat there. All right, time for lure us to show why uh, it's such a powerful card. Hopefully. So, we get to attack for 4 here, so drawing the Rancor was nice too. Uh, we're at 17, which isn't that much, but we can continue to return Auras from our Graveyard, and we can attack with the Lurus next turn too. Assuming it survives. Uh, I think our opponent might have... No, he played Blast Zone as a land last turn. I was going to say, he Expedition mapped the... Uh, power plant and then didn't play it. <laughs> Thought he missed a land drop by accident. Oh really? This is uh, Ulmog? 10 mana screw you. But that's not a creature we want to see. Hopefully it's just a warping ballista. That's beatable. Uh, 
Alright, so he's going to take out Lurus here, and then we can just kill it before he gets any more value. I wonder what else he's doing with that mana. Okay, he's going for Dry Darby here. I wonder if he knew about Totem Armor. Has he got a Walking Ballista, ping both our creatures, and we lose? We will see. Oh, well, that's so lame. Just stop, opponent. Yikes. Alright, well, Lurus is still alive. Alright, let's, uh, let's jam Call Spirit Dancer. <laughs> Seems fantastic. Uh... Might actually be worth protecting the core here over the Lurus. Just when I think we've run out of gas, uh, we start to draw a lot of uh, good stuff. <laughs> right, let's make a giant core. And we can give Totem Armor to Lurus now as well. Uh, okay, seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Uh, so... At this point, I think we just start attacking him. His, uh, his token, is his creatures is going to be making, they're not really going to matter too much. If you ask me, we're just going to be able to kill him for lethal, hopefully next turn. I think the correct play from our opponent there was destroy the Lurus, play a Walking Ballista, and then I potentially make it a bit bigger. Thought Knots here is going to blank. Um, and then we can return Daybreak Coronet from our graveyard, put it on core, draw a card, and then draw a card for turn, and yeah. Unless he just wraths the board, we're pretty good here. Oh, is he activating scavenger grounds here? Okay, well, goodbye graveyard. We can still cycle the horizon canopy if need be also. Is that another walking ballista? Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Walking Ballista. Okay. So our opponent's going to try and block us out here. Warping Whale. Alright, well just rip Coronet off top anyway. And that should do it. Uh, that's just lethal, so let's get in there. Uh, we'll, we'll attack the Ugin with Lurus just because. <laughs> Kill him and his Ugin. Seems, seems good. Alright, well that was pretty fortunate, pretty lucky. Alright, so Suppression Field, Gadok Teague and Force of Vigor are all going to be really good here. Um, as far as cards we don't want, um, uh, da -da. I normally take out like a Griff Spoon and a Core in this position. I might take out a Forest. And a Griff Spoon, I don't know, that's just, no, I shouldn't be taking out Griff Spoon, damn it. Grispoon allows us to get around Chalice. Probably should have just been the core. <laughs> Alright, so we snuck game one against Eldrazi Tron. 
Um, pretty nice. Pretty nice position to be in. Uh, that was all the power of Lurus then, by the way. <laughs> Just getting to cast, what was it, two to three auras from our graveyard with Lurus made all the difference in the world. <sighs> uh, my opponent said he's too tired to play good, apparently. And I just said I'm too bad to play good. Um, which could, you know, have several meanings. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's get out this temple garden. We'll get our boggle happening on that board. And we'll pass the turn. If our opponent plays Chalice here, we can just force a Vigor it. Um, don't. Yeah. Alright, is that a chalice? <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> uh, I might just hold off an extra turn here on the force. I might take this opportunity to get core on the battlefield. Alright, that's pretty good. So now instead of throwing away our Hyena Umbra, we're going to throw away a Boggle. I'm a lot happier about that. So our opponent just got Tron Ma like natural Tron Mana here. That would be really, really sad. Alright, uh, typical Etron player getting their own uh, expedition map counted. <laughs> I guess they are a little bit tired. Okay, well they've got the Dismember, which is unfortunate. <clears throat> Alright, well that was a really good draw, uh, because now we don't lose uh, anything when he activates this Blast Zone, and we can be aggressive with our attack. <clears throat> so we put him to 12, the Dismember did a lot of uh, work for us, taking 4 of his life away. And he's currently got access to 4 mana, or can just activate Blast Zone. Um, is that another Chalice? It's going to be a little upsetting if it is, but... Alright, it's another Chalice. Mindstone. Alright, so I think we go ahead and cast this Griff Spoon. Uh, that'll put our opponent on a three turn clock. Then next turn, uh, if we draw land, we can look to cast Lurus. Oh wait, no, it won't put him on a three turn clock yet, because we have to return it first. But yeah, we, we want that in the graveyard anyway. Even after seeing uh, Scavenging Grounds in round one, we still want it. Uh, because it's protection against Thought Knots here. Uh, we have him on a three turn clock at the moment, four, four turn clock from our attack last turn. If we draw, draw Daybreak, uh, we can reduce that down to two. Although his uh, Blast Zone could do a lot of, a lot of work for him here. Okay, he's just activating his Blast Zone now. Well, this Boggle's looking pretty scared and pretty fragile to me at the moment. Hopefully this is land and we can cast Lurus. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> In the one situation I actually want to draw land, <laughs> I can't stop ripping auras. 
I clicked on my boggle there. Uh, it didn't go through, so that's pretty lame. Uh, goodbye, ethereal armor. He's got the second Thought Knots here in hand. There's an argument to taking Rancor there. Uh, so he can take both Rancors and lock us off green uh, to stop us from casting our next Force of Vigor. Hmm. Well, I don't think we're getting there this game. I know I said that game one, but this one is looking very, very dire. We keep ripping not what we need, and their big stuff is bigger than our big stuff. Or is bigger than our small stuff, I should say. <laughs> Super behind in tempo, this chalice is a brick wall. Even if we had a 5-5 five five we could attack with, that would be fine here. <laughs> attack, block, it'd do nothing, it's just brick wall. <laughs> mm. Mm, we might need to chump block with Boggle at some point. So if we take 9 here, cast Lurus next turn, block the Thought Not Seer, take 5, that'll be 14 damage we've taken, and we'll... Mm, God. At uh, this stage, we just need Force of Vigor into land. Because then we can cast Rancor plus Daybreak, and if our opponent has anything else other than what's just in hand, or on the field, sorry, uh, then we lose. So the out is Force of Vigor into land the turn after. Opponent's thinking about whether or not he wants to attack with the Thought Knots here, I think. I mean, it's pretty free from my perspective, but you never know what he's thinking. Alright, he does choose to attack. Uh, even if we draw that line, we can't block the Thought Knots here and have a creature. Well, this creature is not the worst. Uh... <laughs> But now we just lose to the Reality Smasher, so that's kind of sad. Uh, Chalice is powerful. It gets there this game. Um, might want that land back in when we are on the play. And we want the Griffsman probably in a... Alright, I reckon we'll minus one scout and leave in the Griff's Burn. Then we've still got 12 creatures between our three cores, three um, scouts, and two Gaddock Teague. Alright, we've chosen Lurus. Lurus of the free, free stuff. Alright, we'll keep this hand. So unfortunately, uh, unless we draw a green aura, uh, we can't afford to play a turn two suppression field, or else we're blown out way too hard by turn two chalice on our opponent. So it's very likely gonna be turn two double umbra into turn three suppression field, which isn't horrible, it's just not optimal, you know? Alright, well, I feel a lot better about jamming these Hyena Umbras now. 
Uh, hopefully we can find a second Daybreak Coronet and we get protection against Blast Zone as far as not losing our Daybreaks. <sighs> Alright, opponent with the old Chalice on one. The uh, line which doesn't require a huge amount of thought in my opinion. We do draw a land. Um, we might want to save that for a Dried Arbor potentially, although if we get Dried Arbor this turn, that turns us off of uh, one extra draw for Force of Vigor, although we don't need to cast Force of Vigor at the moment, do we? It's got Eldrazi Temple, four mana, is this uh, old Thought Knots here? It is. Alright, so we're just going to yield till the next end step. It's very likely it takes the suppression field here. It's taken force. Really? I didn't expect that. Alright. Let's get the temple garden. Uh, if we wanted to cycle that Horizon Canopy, we would have done that before we cast the Suppression Field. Uh, I think we want the Mana for Lurus. Like, our opponent hasn't done much with our board yet, but he could. Opponent also chooses to block, which is interesting. Uh, they could just be stalling until an all is dust, which would be quite horrifying. <sighs> okay. They just got nothing in hand. Why'd they block if they had nothing in hand? Alright, let's just cast this Lurus. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. If he plays exactly Eldrazi Temple into All is Dust, it's worse to play Lurus. <clears throat> Which is one of the only ways we lose. Like, it's better against a Blast Zone hand, but other than that, all this dust is the major way we're losing from here by what I can see. Um, at the moment, Blast Zone would be a very large speed hump, but just a speed hump, really. On the great creator, well that is irritating, but it doesn't stop us actually, uh, because he can't cast the ensnaring bridge this turn, so. Um, we get there, against Eldrazi Tron at that, which is very nice. If we do go 4-1 um, this league, I realise that's uh, still another three matches away, um, but if we do go 3-1, um, that will put us back up to a 70% win rate, which is the target I'm going for, really. Right, we're currently at 67.6, so rounded, a rounded 68. Alright, we won the die roll against B Meister. 
Um, here is our companion. Let's see what our starting seven looks like. Um, now the opponents revealed the one that makes activated abilities cost less. So this is likely a Stoneforge Mystic deck. I don't think this is where we want to be against the Stoneforge Mystic deck. We don't have Flying, we don't have Daybreak or Ethereal Armor. Let's get a bit greedier. Alright, this will do. Um, I'll look to bottom the Core Spirit Dancer here, I think. Hopefully we can get them with Suppression Field. Just uh, <laughs> completely negate what his creature's doing. Avacyn's Pilgrim. Breeding pool into Avacyn's Pilgrim. Very interesting. Right, we miss our first land drop. Uh, this suppression field is going to do nothing by the looks of things. We can attack for two though. And attack for three next turn or hold up path. Bonus down to 13 already. It's pretty low. <coughs> so there is the Stoneforge Mystic. We did call that. Uh, we'll see what they reveal here. It's likely Batterskull. Hopefully we... What the hell is this? Three mana. Equipped for zero. Equipped creature has three and tap... This creature gets plus two until end of turn. Oh, three and untap. Okay. So they make an infinitely big creature and then just attack. Seems annoying. Let's attack, see if he double blocks and then we'll path the other thing. Hmm. Although it's one mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Untapped, then he does it on a, on a mana dork. So if we get rid of the mana dork here, it removes his ability to go and get an infinitely large creature. <clears throat> But he would have to play his com uh, companion first before that's an issue, but we might as well get rid of it now while we can. Hopefully we can draw Daybreak Coroner, or draw a land to cast a, activate Suppression Field, and then cast Daybreak Coroner the following turn. Mm. Alright, well that's just sad. This is such a boring game, holy moly. Dried Arbor, pro green. Make an infinitely big Dried Arbor and attack. Yep. <laughs> it's 
So now he just needs a white mana source to, or a red mana source to cast this. This is such a janky card. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So this just does the same as that. Alright, and he makes an infinitely big creature. Alright. Okay. Um, well, his deck did sort of what I pieced together that it was doing. Um, Alright, so we want a little more removal. We want the artifact destruction. Flying won't be that important. Vigilance will probably be more important than flying. I think we want our core spirit dancers uh, to just combo kill our opponent with. <clears throat> Alright, let's uh, go on this. Go on this. Feels so bad pathing a mana dork, like seriously. <laughs> what a silly deck. <sighs> if we didn't miss land drops for six turns, we could have had a game. Alright, we will keep this. Uh, hopefully we draw something a little more exciting than these auras. Maybe a Rancor. Or like the one of Griffspoon I think I left in my deck. Hopefully. Could make sure we leave a scout in hand also so we have an answer to for so we have a card to pitch if we draw force. Still shape his gifts, really, really. All right, well, we drew exactly what I was hoping we'd draw. Let's get our clock happening. Now I sort of wish I had the uh, Seal of Primordium in the deck so that I could combine that with Lurus to remove every last artifact he plays. Um, but yes, hindsight, I can't have it all. I only have 15 sideboard slots, technically 14 if you discount Lurus. Hmm. <sighs> mm. Sure.
So I'm guessing Wooded Foothill is getting Dried Arbor. And then they're going to look to equip this thing. But then they can't, still can't go off yet. It seems hasty getting that now. Because they need to cast this plus a 2 mana spell. And they've only got access to a maximum of 3 mana. Unless they're running Simeon Spirit Guides. Dokey. Uh, so we drew a Hyena Umbra, which is nice. Let's just go ahead and put that on Core Spirit Dancer, see what we draw. So the way we can get them is equip his Sorcery Speed, right? So... Oh, Daybreak Coronet, that's nice. Uh, so it seems equip is Sorcery Speed in response to them activating equip we can then destroy the enchantment sorry the artifact here they have to take six unless they want to throw away their giver because they can block core spirit dancer with zirda and then give it protection from white so yeah okay or they don't give it protection from white that seems Loose. Did they lit misclick? That had to have been a misclick, right? Or did they expect us to play land and hold up path? I don't think that's right. I think it was just a misclick. Second Dried Arbor. Okay. It's a really cool art. This is the one I have on paper. That's not true. I have one of each. This is my foil one I have in paper. You get paid like 20 bucks for it or something back when that was the going rate. I have no idea what the going rate is now. Um, so now they only have access to 2 mana. And they can't cast their mantle this turn. They're only on 1 as well. All right. All right, evasive effect. Nope. All right. We should still be good enough to get there.
Surprised they're not blocking with the Giver of Runes there. The Biomancer seems way more important to what they're doing. Or that, I suppose. Alright, well, we get there. Opponent didn't see the force. Maybe they were playing around it. Sort of want at least one more Griff Spoon than that after seeing how that game played out. Um, Graph Digger's Cage could be good getting their Mana Dorks. And I don't think we want it though. The Suppression Field just too deep because two effects and it costs zero anyway I think we still want it Alright, let's see how we go game three. Alright, opponents on the play, of course. Uh, we can keep our hand. Doesn't really have any interaction, but it's not worth a mulligan. Like, this is a really good 7 against most things. We might even just beat him by being aggressive. Look, he's mulled to 5. We could just beat him off uh, deck inconsistencies at this point. Um, let's see how we go. Alright, looks like he's got a tough decision on the mold of 5. Uh, maybe he wants to go to 4, but he knows going to 4 is bad. Maybe he's just deciding what to uh, shed out of his hand. Not sure. This is Mana Dork, that's going to be a little irritating. Giver of Runes? I way prefer that. <laughs> it means he's got a slower hand. Slippery Boggle, not a great draw, but maybe we draw Force of Vigor. Um, and then it has applicability to just throw away. Treetop Village, okay. Opponent is looking a little slow. He's got the Steel Shaper's Gift to get his uh, artifact with. So now we do have to worry about that artifact. Alright, uh, Deck's doing its best to sabotage us here. Maybe I should have uh, played the Windswept Heath to rip a land out of the uh, 60, or of the now uh, 51, out of the library in any case. Um, Alright, so 
We can attack, we can put him to 12. The next turn we can attack for 7. So we're going to need to draw something like an Ethereal Armor or a Daybreak Coronet to uh, get the win. So Ethereal Armor would be exactly lethal. Assuming he doesn't hurt himself this turn, then Daybreak Coronet would also be lethal. He's just going ahead and casting this. Next turn he can activate his Treetop Village, equip it, and then do his thing. Uh, that's not what we want to see, uh, so let's just go ahead see if we can get a draw into Force of Vigor. That card does not read Force of Vigor, so I fr I'm very afraid we're doomed here. We could just block the treetop village after it's giant. I don't think they have a way to give it evasiveness other than giver of runes. Um, so very likely it's going to get protection from green and we're going to lose core spirit dancer. And then we get another shot at ethereal armor, daybreak coronet or force of vigor. <clears throat> Uh, at this point, Rancor will make our creature have 10 power as well. So Horizon Canopy uh, will put them to 10. And another Rancor is uh, Virtual Lethal 2 at this point. Oh, I didn't need to be afraid. Wait a minute, he doesn't have one of these effects on the board yet. Why didn't I attack? I'm so stupid. I've literally just given him turn uh, time to play this. Okay. Well, that was a pretty large punt on my part. We draw a land, uh, which is just swell. Come on, show me some gas. You freaking kidding me. Oh my god. Alright, let's attack. Though he's just going to give protection. Oh, he might not give protection, um, because he might be fearful of Path to Exile here. Really, we just needed to attack last turn and not punt the game. That's what actually had to happen. I don't like losing to myself playing bad. Um, <laughs> it's not a good feeling. Not a good feeling. Wow. Okay, what do you get? Noble Hierarch is what he got rid of. Okay. Well, our opponent is giving us a draw here um, to potentially draw our own force of vigor. So that's quite interesting. We've also got enchantments in the graveyard to uh, start recasting through Lurus. Uh, we have to play a, another creature here so that he can't choose between what colors. I say he has to choose between what colors um, he gives protection from, so he can't attack for lethal. So it's always just going to be pro green, uh, pro pro green here. So we have to block with our core spirit dancer. 
Mm, now we just hit six in white. Wait, does this have trample? It does. Never mind. We just lose. Alright. Um, well, that's our own fault for misplaying against his Zadira combo. Um, is this 2.0? Where are all my extra decks? Don't tell me they didn't save. I had a whole heap of other decks down the bottom here, right? Jeskai Oreos. I thought I had more of the uh, companion decks, but I can't seem to see them. Uh, we did actually beat this deck once. Um, so, we do technically have a win against it, even if it wasn't just then. It's not me just making myself feel better. Um, although we did have a win against it then if we didn't misplay. Uh, so we're down to 66% now. Not so happy because that's from my misplay um, that we lost that one. Alright, let's see how our hand looks after we select our companion. Opponent doesn't have a companion. This hand looks really good. We're gonna keep. Uh, we're on the die. We won the die roll. We're on the play. Uh, we've got, we've got plenty of flying for if this is Death Shadow, uh, which I almost kind of hope it is. <laughs> we'll see. We got a play against Ponza as well. Spy Bluff Canal. Is this Storm? This is Storm. So we do have a removal spell for his creature. Um, the moment we just want to resolve our Grist Burns here, attack for three, and hopefully draw into something like an Ethereal Armor, or a Daybreak, get a bit of a clock going. We are so weak to Anger of the Gods here, or like an Echoing Truth or something. <laughs> this is uh, pretty sad. So I'm going to stop on my opponent's upkeep, and I'm going to attempt to Path Goblin Electromancer. He, if, if he has Remand, uh, we can recast it, and then he'd need a second Remand. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh. Alright, so that resolved. We'll see if he's got the Brawl to play this turn. Alright, let's cycle this Horizon Canopy away and see if we draw anything interesting. We draw more land, so, I mean, uh, I'm playing right into Anger of the Gods here, hopefully not. Um, hopefully we don't get done by it. It's kind of loose from me. We could still get Lurus, but yeah. Alright, he's got another Electromancer. I wonder if he's just going to go for it here. Looks like he is. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go off, because we don't have any interaction right now. Eight rituals, a brow. Well, there's past in flames. 
The good news on Past in Flames is he doesn't have a gifts ungiven in hand or in the graveyard, so. He might whiff. Oh, well, there's the gifts ungiven, so we just lose super hard here now. Um. It literally doesn't matter at this point. Uh, we just lose this game. Uh, chickens don't get there. Suppression field's no good here. Daybreak's not too bad. Uh, we do want our graveyard hate, so we've got Graft Digger's Cage. we got Tormod's Crypt. Both of them are really good here. Um, other than that... We may or may not want Path to Exile. We definitely want Gaddock Teague. And we may or may not want Leyline. Alright, we'll remove two of our chickens from our deck, uh, courtesy of our opponent's wisecracks. But, you know, fair to him because that's pretty accurate. Um, hmm... Path wasn't the best there, but it's really not the worst card in the world. Maybe surely we want to use our core spirit dancers to draw to our paths or draw to our graveyard hate. Maybe. All right, let's go with that. We got six hate cards in, so it's not like uh, we're light on the hate. Uh, no creatures. This is much better. I'll pro probably bottom the Daybreak Coronet. Maybe it's just Sentinel's Eyes? I don't know. Um, opponent uh, began with 7. Alright, let's get rid of Daybreak Coronet. I definitely feel it better if that second core spirit dancer was a path. <sighs> Please show me graveyard hate deck. Please. Uh, well, we get one more draw to get there. Alright, well, we saw four new cards this turn and couldn't hit one of our graveyard hate pieces. That's 15 cards. No, we've seen 21 cards out of our deck and haven't seen one of six graveyard hate pieces. Which would be one in ten. No. We've seen 11 cards from our deck, sorry. Um... So 1 in 10, we are due to hit something, but we didn't hit it here. Um, hopefully he can't go off. Uh, <laughs> we've got him to 4, which is none too shabby, and he could put himself to 1 here, and then we lose. <laughs> oh man. Tormod's Crypt would have been so good. Mm. 
Hopefully all he's got is like pieces of the puzzle and he's just sitting there sad. I'm not above my opponents being sad. <laughs> Not when they're playing Storm and we're down a game, at least. Arid Flame. Okay, well that card can get really scary. Oh, Aria of Flame. That card can get very scary very fast. Yeah, okay. Alright, well, we got there uh, by the skin of our teeth. That was quite scary. Um, let me just check to see if Aria of Flame uh, deals damage by targeting or not, because I might want Leyline after seeing that. Okay, so it does target the player, uh, which makes me want Leyline more. Uh, if we have Leyline, we won't have our companion Lurus, but that is okay. Um, on the draw, of course, Spirit Dance is probably weaker. Um, and we might want to minus out some of these Spider Umbras. They're probably a little bit worse than what our Griff Spoons are. Uh, maybe Griff Spoon isn't the best, so we only want three. Alright, let's do that. Hope our opponent's not playing Anger of the Gods. Um, on the draw, this is probably just not good enough to get us there. I love the hand, but probably not really. Not against Storm. This seems way better. We got two hate cards, and we've got auras too, and our best aura. Um... <sighs> So, potentially casting a zero mana aura here feels pretty good. Alright, let's play our totem armor effect because we didn't draw land, so that kind of smells. Uh, opponent's now at, um, now at two mana, so he could play Lord plus Ritual, sorry. He played creature plus a bunch of rituals and go off, so we now want the tall mods crypt on the board. I think it's interesting um, playing Storm in a meta which is full of uh, Lurus and tall mod crypts. <clears throat> Alright, well we are just drawing auras, it looks like. Um, another remand? Can you just stop opponent? Honestly, far out. Mm. I just want to resolve some bloody auras, is that too much to ask? Jokes on them. Eventually we will draw land and we will cast spells and we will get them, maybe. <laughs> I 
Alright, second goblin. Second creature. It's attacking for one. I mean, you know, take that. <laughs> Ow. Alright, take three. Uh, what's the bet he's got another remand? Alright, let's attack. We finally have protection against Anger of the Gods, which they're probably not playing. Um, not, not after casting two creatures onto the board anyway. Although, 2 mana Anger of the Gods that deals him 2 damage seems OP to me. Alright, let's start jamming these Ethereal Armors. Hopefully they resolve. And just keep this attack plan going. We're now out damaging our opponent. Although that's not really that difficult. Is this the gifts I'm given? So we've got to be a little bit careful about what we put to the graveyard here. Um, obviously we do have the interaction via tour mods. So... It's a thing. I think we're one two this league, right? I don't know why I didn't update that earlier. All right. So, Aria of the Flame can go to the graveyard, and so can Gifts I'm Given. Echoing Truth. Maybe Gifts can just go to hand. We're not that close to killing them so we need to get rid of aria of flames i'm just scared of if we give them echoing truth what they can do with it i think we just get rid of the echoing truth there because they'll just in in our end step bounce our tool mods crypt with it and then go off during their turn so we have to give them the second gifts i'm given hopefully they they don't have the second echoing truth okay I'm surprised they didn't cast that then. The bottom two cards, which is nice. I think our opponent just has enough mana to go off here regardless of if we do this or not because he can get a second pass in flames with his gifts ungiven. Um, how many instants have they got in the graveyard? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we just can't. This feels super bad getting like bricked on one mana on the draw. Oh my god. Like honestly. 
One mana on the draw, we've seen five extra cards. And we haven't seen a land. It seems like way worse than... Way, way worse. <laughs> than uh, missing aura at this stage. Uh, way less likely than... Yeah, I don't know. It's absurd. So unlikely not to see a land in those five five draws we've had. <laughs> All right, so Manamorphos to grave and past in flames to grave. They've already got all the mana in the world, so we just need to try and deny resources here. Though they can Manamorphos get some blue. Flashback, oh wait, how much is this? Alright, this is just GG. Because he can recast uh, his past in flames and then recast uh, Grape Shot, so we just lose. Um, yeah, like, get land screwed uh, and lose. Uh, I don't think that's new, uh, new news to anyone. Just uh, the game sometimes. Alright, nice loss there against Storm. Uh, this is our worst league yet. We, uh, <laughs> we are 1-3, uh, which has not been a bracket we've been in since the printing of Lurus. Um, so 25 uh, by... 39. It's down to a 64% win rate. That's very sad. I was so happy about where I was sitting, and in one league I've just done so much harm. <sighs> the unfortunate thing is, as well, like, we only misplayed one game that I saw, and the rest of it has just been um, variance and bad luck. So we won the die roll. Uh, which is excellent. Here's our Lurus. Our opponent does not have a companion. We'll keep this hand. Uh, we've got access to three mana, Lurus mana, uh, plus our hexproof creature, some auras, and a second hexproof creature in case things go wrong. Forest. What's our opponent doing here? Birds of Paradise. Ugh. The feeling what he's doing is a lot more broken than what it's appearing to be currently. Let's go ahead and fetch out a land. We'll play our Core Spirit Dancer and we'll attack for one. Use our Core Spirit Dancer to draw a whole bunch of cards and hopefully beat our opponent really quickly. Temple Garden. Devoted Druid. Alright. Another Birds of Paradise. So, I'm guessing this is like a Heliod combo deck here. If we draw another Ethereal Armor, we might get him close to dead. On the one attack. Um... We'll see. We'll see what we draw. I hate this matchup. I hate this matchup so much. <laughs> we draw a Rancor, which isn't a bad second option, but I don't think it's going to get us to lethal. Third Rancor. So if we put this on Core Spirit Dancer, it will up it to 13 damage, uh, which is worth. Alright, um, cross our fingers, he doesn't have the combo. He didn't block the scout, that's a free damage. <clears throat> I 
Is this a collected company our opponent's going for? It's looking a lot like it. Court of Calling? For two. So then he'll have infinite mana. Can he do anything with infinite mana is the question. What a slow, painful process this is. Collected company. Let's hope he blanks. We'll see what he draws. Eternal witness, which can return cord. Another vizier, and he can just cord for some creature like a walking ballista and win the game. So um, we just lose that. We we could wait and see the win come, but there's literally no point. Alright, Gadok Tig is going to be good. Graf Digger's Cage is going to be good. Path is going to be good. Torpor Orb, probably not as much. Force of Vigor, probably not as much. Uh, we lose a lot of value on our Grispoon. And on our Spider Umbra here. And then I might just remove a Scout keep my more important creatures around <sighs> yeah if there was one variant of deck I would delete it's not Eldrazi Tron it is this deck it is just so stupid to play against where like one of the few decks that they have a good matchup against like it's a horrible matchup for us but they have bad matchups against anything with permission, anything with counter spells. Um, this is pretty shit. <laughs> Alright, this is a lot better, uh, but we don't have a creature, so no. This will do. Keep. Bottom Spirit Dancer plus Coronet. Uh, bottom uh, scout plus coronet, pardon me. Play dried arbor and pass. Opponent casts birds of paradise. We're going to get that core spirit dancer out there. Uh, see if she can't do the job for us. Hopefully we draw like Land Gadok Teague, we can cast Rancor and attack for four. Um, I think that would be about our best turn. Has he got black in his deck? Really? Ugh, that's disgusting. Rancor. Uh, we will draw. Uh, we don't draw a land, so it's sort of way too risky to cast a white aura here. We could do some maths, and maybe it would be mathematically correct. Um, we're probably just not winning if we don't cast a second aura this turn. Come on, come on, draw me a land. Alright, we brick, of course. I mean, we bottomed two non land sources at the start via our scry. I guess we shuffled them back in. But we just never, never get what we need. <laughs> it's so stupid. We saw three cards that turn, and we needed one white mana. It didn't matter what white mana, just one white mana. And we were good. But we didn't get that. 
However, if he doesn't combo off here, we can kill him next turn. But that's a big if. Maybe he just doesn't have it, because he's tanking really hard here. The fact he's spending mana on a Birds of Paradise is good. I think he's got the Vizier and is contemplating casting it. Maybe not. He wouldn't have tapped the Birds. He would have tapped, yeah. Bird Swamp to cast Vizier, and then he would have un like tapped the Devoted Druid, untapped it to cast the Bird, so that wouldn't make sense. Don't think he's got Vizier. He might have that stupid god, uh, Heliod, but... or a Destroy effect, Assassin's Trophy maybe. Three mana here, is that a Malmstrom Pulse? Four mana, collected company, okay. Well now he's tapped out, so if this breaks, we're good. Why didn't, what? That can't have been the most mana efficient way to have done that. Well he only has access to green mana, he does not have access to any other color. Alright, whatever. Fucking get me out. What a waste of time. This stupid deck. Absolutely ridiculous deck. Alright, we lose. Um, that caps off my worst league in an incredibly long time. Um, pretty miserable, really. Just about anything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Uh, we are down to a 62.5% win rate now. Uh, so... Yeah, I guess 63 because we've been rounding up for everything else. Um, yeah, what can you do? Sometimes the deck just runs absolutely rubbish and you lose uh, a lot more games than what you otherwise would. And sometimes you just run into bad matchups. Um, these decks were, except for one or two, very different to what we've been versing in the other 35 games that we've played prior to this. Alright, so that's it for this league. Um, let me know if you enjoyed it or not, and I'll see you for the next one.